Hi, my name is Dave Kemick for the CIST Student Help website, and in this example I'm going to show you how to use a grid view to pull information from a database table. So as you can see, I'm right here on just a basic uh, web form, and I've added a grid view to this page. It's just called uh, Grid View 1, that's the default name. And that's all we really have to do. If we just leave it like this, it'll pull the information in with uh, column headers, and it'll display the information below that, as you can see here in the uh, design view. So that's a basic setup. Uh, this works perfectly fine. You can also uh, set up item templates and further uh, customize the way your data will be represented, but for this example we're just going to stick with the basics. So next I'm going to switch over to the uh, code behind here. So as I mentioned, this is in Visual Basic, and I'm just going to walk you through, rather than having to type everything out and you waiting for me to type, um, I'll just start from the top and walk you through uh, what's going on here. So the first thing you should notice is that up at the top we have two import statements. We have system.data and system.data.sql client. And those are needed to uh, perform basic SQL uh, applications. So we always have to have those. And then here I've declared a string called string connection string and that will actually hold the, uh, our connection string to the database. The reason I put it above the page load is because you never know down the line if you're going to want to set up a separate function where you're going to need this connection string or uh, alternatively if you're going to have to modify it. So say for instance we're using one connection string in the page load function, we may need a different one on a, in a different function. So it's always good to leave that at the top, that way you can address it and modify it as needed. So moving down here to the page load we have the if not is post back then. And what that means is that we don't want to uh, fire this um, statement here unless this is the first time the page has been loaded. If it's already been posted back to, otherwise, for example, if it's uh, been submitted already once, we don't want to have to run through this all again. So we go ahead and put that statement in there. And next we uh, connect to a standard contacts database. Uh, this is just an example database that I've set up. And so we have our little comment here, and I'm going to set up a uh, string path to the actual server map path of our database. So right now inside of the app data folder in our solution, you can see right there, here's our app data folder, we have a contacts database, and that's just a standard MDF database. And so we have to set up a connection string to get to that database. So here again, as you can see, we uh, created the string up above the page load, and here we're actually giving it some content. So the first thing we have to do is set a data source, and this is the standard format for any connection string here. So we're using SQL Express, and our database is actually attached to the project. So we tell it to look in that string path, which we created just before this, and then we set the integrated security to true and the user instance to true. So like I said, this is the path to our database, and here we're actually putting it into the, uh, the connection string. So the next thing we need is an actual command. So we need a SQL command to ping our database and to uh, grab some data from it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new string command. And these uh, variable names aren't necessarily what you'll have to call yours. You can call them whatever you'd like. I just tend to stick with this format because it's what I've uh, become adjusted to. But feel free to use whatever you'd like. So here we create a new string and we load that string with our actual SQL statement. So if you're familiar with SQL, you'll see that what we're doing is we're selecting the top 1,000 records, including contact ID, the first name field, the middle name field, the last name field, the email address, and the phone from our contacts table. And we're ordering that by contact ID. So what that means is that uh, the first one, uh, the uh, field that has the contact ID of 1 will be first, and then the contact ID of 2 will be second, and so on. Okay, so now we have our string command, and we need to set up an actual connection to the database. So what we're going to do is we're going to dim a connection, a uh, SQL connection here. I call it con here, but you can call it whatever you'd like. So we say dim con as new SQL connection, and we use our connection string that we declared above in that uh, statement, and that actually sets up our connection. Next, we need to actually declare our uh, SQL command, so we do something similar. We say dim SQL command as new SQL command, and we use our uh, string command from above, which is right here in this line, and we use our uh, SQL connection that we just declared in the line above, 
and that sets up our command. Next we need something that actually reads this data. So, so far we've set up a command and we've set up a connection, but we need something that actually pulls the data from the database. So what we need to do is dim a DR data reader, uh, and we that's an actual SQL data reader. I call them DR data reader just like before. Feel free to use whatever variable name you would like. And that's a SQL data reader which will actually read the data from the database. Okay, so now that we've read the data, we need to store it somewhere. So what we need for that is a data table. So uh, just to walk you through this, like I said, we set up a connection to the database. We set up our command, which is a SQL. So we're going to uh, execute that command, and it's going to pull it into the DR data reader. But the DR data reader just kind of holds the data, and then we need to actually put it into a table so our grid view can understand it. So that's what uh, DR data table is a data, ta uh, data table right here. OK, so now we've done all the prep work. We're ready to go. We're ready to start reading the uh, data from the database. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our connection. And then we're going to say dr data reader equals SQL command dot execute reader. And what that does is it basically exactly what it says. It executes the uh, SQL command and it starts pulling information into the dr data reader. Next up, we have our uh, DT data table, which is just a data table. And we tell it to load information from the dr data reader. And that will uh, set up a good instance for us to pull the DT uh, data table information into the grid view. So we do exactly that. We tell the grid view one, which is on their uh, web form. We'll switch back to that. So here's our grid view. We tell that to look to DT data table as its data source. So we're saying, OK, grid view one, we need you to go look at uh, DT data table to get your data, and we want to bind that. So that will actually execute it to the grid view, and the uh, data will actually show up in grid view one on our page. Finally, and this is one thing that sometimes uh, for me it's easy to forget, you want, always want to make sure that you close your connection when you're all done, when you're all set. That way you don't have any data leaks, which can cause problems. And of course, our last uh, line here is just a simple end if because we did our uh, if not is post back. So we close that up, and we're all set. We can execute this page. It'll run uh, perfectly. And feel free to use this uh, however you'd like. Like I said, this is just a sample contacts database, but you can certainly modify it. And uh, feel free to do so. Thank you for listening. Like I said, I am Dave Kemick of the CIST uh, Student Help website, and I'm happy to help you out here. Thank you.